Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike the intern and the birthday boy Ned Reynolds in the studio today. He's probably going to punch me after I say this, but if you see him on the street today, buy him a drink. He likes whiskey. <laughs> Even if he says no, he really means yes. But seriously, though, happy birthday, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, so it didn't take long. I kind of figured this might be one of the ones they would flex. Chiefs Chargers Sunday, November 20th was supposed to be the mid-afternoon game. They've now flexed it to the night game. Now, before we talk about that, though, is that really a flex? Because in the mid-afternoon game, there's only usually one or two, right? And one of them is quote unquote At America's the most, there game. There are two and there is one. And yeah. I think this would have been a week when there was one. It's Cincinnati Pittsburgh. So I don't I I mean it's a flex, but is it really a flex? Not our decision. Yeah, well, anyway, Chiefs are playing Sunday night again, so it looks like we're going to be a tired puppy that Monday morning, but it is the way it is. It happens, and it's because the Chiefs are such a popular TV uh, uh, menu. People want to see them. They want to see Patrick Mahomes. They love Patrick Mahomes. Everybody does. It's a national team. It's not just a Missouri ball club. So NBC has said, hey, we want that game, and it's possible that the American Conference West might be riding on the outcome. The Chiefs at the moment are one game ahead of the Los Angeles Chargers. That's the game, folks. It's the Chiefs and the Chargers on November 20th that's been flexed to a Sunday night game right before Thanksgiving. It's possible, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think the Chiefs will have a more substantial lead because the Chargers play in San Francisco, or actually in Santa Clara, this weekend. And the 49ers are going to be awfully tough for them, while Kansas City has Jacksonville. So I think probably going into this game, there's going to be a major difference. However, that's what the folks at NBC, they have that option, have decided. So that game is flexed. See what happens there. Um, But, you know, I saw a tweet yesterday, and I thought this was a really good insight. The guy said, you know, I wasn't old enough to really appreciate what Michael Jordan was doing when he was doing it in real time. And you can just go back and look. And I was old enough to appreciate that. That's when I was into basketball hardcore because of him and Bird and Johnson and all those guys. But he said, pay attention to what Mahomes is doing now. And that's exactly what you're saying. They're a popular team, and you got to pay attention. The kid plays like he's playing in the backyard, which is great. They host the Jags this Sunday. I will be at that game, freezing my butt off. I think the high is like 40 that day. But Ned will be here in the comforts of the studio for Ned Talk. That is exactly right. What are the odds? The odds at the moment are 9.5. I find that to be very curious because against the Tennessee Titans, The Chiefs were a 12-and-a-half-point favorite. Tennessee's probably better than Jacksonville. Jaguars have been playing a little bit better football. They certainly aren't in the ballpark with the Chiefs, but then again, it is pro football. Anything can happen. But 9-and-a-half are the odds on this one. Kansas City favored. I'd stay away from that one. I would definitely stay away from it because you never know what's going to happen. Last week, I thought it was going to – well, no, it was a pretty low-scoring game uh, last weekend, but uh, you never know who's going to show up in Kansas City. Hopefully, the real team does this weekend, so it's easy for me. All right. World Series TV ratings. They're out now when you have an East Coast team like that. Pretty big fan base like the Phillies do. Astros, I'm not really sure about. What do you think? Well, big TV market in That's Houston. Uh, Philadelphia is the number three TV market in the country. It's New York. Uh, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Chicago, and then Houston. Houston's right in there. So that's, in a sense, what Major League Baseball was wanting. But the TV ratings were the second lowest in baseball history. Uh, an average of 12 million. Now, 12 million is is a pretty doggone good number these days, considering all of the outlets that you have. But it still doesn't resonate with the uh, total number. But just about 12 million on the average, the lowest ever was just over $9 million, and that was for the uh, Dodgers and the Tampa Bay Rays back in 2020. But there were other problems, then too, include, including uh, COVID and things like that. So it's, it's really kind of skewed in a way. But still, you have um, the second lowest ever, and Major League Baseball will say, hey, still it's 12 million folks, and that's a buying public. Definitely is, and uh, it was an exciting series through Game 3. After that, it kind of just became business as usual. When Philadelphia went to sleep. (laughs) I know. (laughs) It's not fun to watch when one of the teams is playing and the other isn't, Ned. Um, I'll have to give it up to you as far as the college football bowl rankings. You're pretty damn close, with exception of TCU, my man. And and with Ohio State and Michigan. That's a garbage. I think think Ohio State being in there is garbage. Uh, What you think doesn't count. I know, but I know you agree with me, though, at least. No, 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 no. I thought... 
that Michigan would be number two and Ohio State three because of the close game that they played. Michigan ran away with their game, but Ohio State did not. They were taken to the wire by Northwestern, a really weak football team. But Ohio State stays number two. Number one, Georgia, you knew that would happen. Georgia's one, Michigan is two, then you have Ohio State. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Ohio State's two, Michigan is number three, and Texas Christian goes to number four. It's not a surprise, TCU is a very good football team. However, this is going to change again because TCU does have some very significant challenges ahead of them, including Baylor, and Baylor will play them very tough. So there's a long way to go before these final four teams are judged. How about Tennessee drops down to fifth? Tennessee was number one last week. I thought they'd go to number four. Alabama stays in the top ten. They are number ten. That's where Bama is. Bama has a game with Ole Miss coming up this weekend. It is in Oxford, Mississippi. It will be a challenge. Mississippi is a very good football team. That's Lane Kiffin's ball club. Then they have Alabama has a putt game. They play Austin P. That's a Division I AA ball club. Then they have their game with Auburn, and Auburn is not very good. So you suspect that Alabama certainly win two and maybe all three of these final games. And then what happens? Who do you decide who's going to be in the West? Okay, Clemson, which had been number four, drops all the way down to number 12. They are out of the top 10. That's still in bowl territory, major bowl territory, but it certainly isn't in playoff territory. Clemson going to South. They, they never want to see South Bend, Indiana again. Two years ago, they went there with Trevor Lawrence as their quarterback, and Notre Dame beat them in overtime. And this time, Notre Dame thumps them. So, <laughs> hey, the heck with that. We ain't going back. <laughs> it's crazy how some teams just have some teams' numbers. It's the Chiefs-Titans thing. I just don't know how Tennessee has our number, but they do sometimes. And the same thing with Notre Dame. It's crazy, but there's just something to it. All right, now what are the odds on the two regional section teams with big games this weekend, they Ed? Do have, do have very big, big ones. Big ones. Missouri goes to Knoxville, to Neyland Stadium, and plays Tennessee. Tennessee is number five in America. Tennessee will be very, very angry after that dominance by Georgia last week. So what are the odds? Well, Tennessee is a three-touchdown favorite over Missouri. A 21-point, uh, Missouri's 21-point dog in this one. Tennessee favored by 21. Maybe a little bit too much, but then again, this is a very high-scoring Tennessee team, but it is a pretty good defensive Missouri team. We'll see what happens. Arkansas has LSU coming into Fayetteville. And get this. Now, here's LSU off their overtime, well, the two-point conversion win over Alabama. LSU is a three-point favorite over Arkansas. Three points down in Fayetteville. If the game was in Baton Rouge, LSU would probably be about a seven- or eight-point favorite. But in Fayetteville, there are only three points. And that's surprising because Arkansas is coming off a loss to Liberty last week. So we'll see what happens. Pretty good uh, football games coming up. Should be a very interesting Saturday. Absolutely. And uh, Arkansas always plays those teams pretty damn close, really? no matter how their record is. So they're going to want blood, especially after losing to Liberty last week. All right. Basketball Bears open their season tonight. Are we going to have a better year than we did last year, Ned? We'll find out. There are 14 new players on the team, and it's up to Dana Ford to blend them together to come up with the starting lineup. It may be a couple of weeks before uh, Coach Ford settles on who's going to play on a regular basis and who's not, but these are all pretty good players. The Bears are opening up against a Division II team, Missouri S&T from Rolla. They're in the Great Lakes Valley Conference with Drury. You're saying, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's a regular season game? It is. Division I teams can play one Division II team during the year. And the Bears have chosen to open with a D2 team. Now, interestingly enough, for Missouri S&T, it's an exhibition. But for the Bears, it is not. If the Bears, God forbid, were to lose this game, <laughs> you'd see big-time problems. Missouri State will go in as a favorite. They're the and just a bigger, stronger team and should win this one. 7 o'clock starting time, but it is the season opener, and then things get a whole lot more dicey. And a lot tougher for the Bears, Ned. From the bottom of my heart, happy birthday, sir. I hope That's, you have a wonderful day. Thank you, sir. That's very nice.